welcome to the second part of the chapter water bodies in our previous class we have learned about ocean today we shall be learning about sea now what is sea or what is the definition of the sea a sea is a large body of salt water that is surrounded in wholly or part by land sea is a part of ocean and it is much smaller compared to your oceans and it is shallow also compared to your oceans sea are closer to the continent or your land masses now sea can be divided into two types number one is your marginal sea secondly or your number two it is your inland sea if you see here in the image you will find lots of sea bering sea your sea of japan yellow sea east china sea these all are the seas some of the seas that are present on the earth surface and if you see you will find it is closer to the continent coming to margins the marginal seas are the part or the divisions of your oceans now this marginal sea are surrounded by islands archipelagos and peninsulas by island here we mean the uh, mass of land which is surrounded from every side by water archipelago means a group of many islands okay many large islands or your peninsula peninsula are the landmass where maximum of the sites are covered by water so these seas are surrounded by such landforms of uh, islands archipelagos or peninsulas your marginal seas are not as deep as your oceans they are much shallower than the oceans or your open sea now there are some of the examples cited here which are the example of your sea your Bering Sea, your Caribbean Sea, North Sea, and your Arabian Sea. The type of sea is your inland sea. Now, inland sea are much more different than your marginal sea. In inland sea, the seas are surrounded by land mass through all its side, and the sea is in the middle. Now, if you see here in the image uh, of two sea, the Caspian Sea and the Aral Sea, you will find it is surrounded by land mass on almost all its sides. Now, such sea are known as your inland sea. Example, your Aral Sea, your Black Sea, Dead Sea, and the Red Sea. Now, another water bodies is your lakes. Lakes is also a body of large water bodies which is present on the earth surface. Now, the lake is formed by the accumulation of water uh, from, uh, from rivers, from rains, or even underground water which are collected in the natural depression on the earth surface in the shallow part of the earth surface now the lakes can be of different size shape depth and even the mood of formations mostly the lakes contain fresh water here by fresh water means water which does not contain salt unlike your ocean and sea the example of lake is your lake victoria Lake Erie, Lake Huron. Now, what are the importance of lakes? Now, lakes play a very important role. The large lakes, such as the five great lakes of North America, provide inland waterways. Here, by inland waterways, means use of water to transport from one place to another. Instead of using roads, railways, they use waterways to go move from one place to another. So it is very useful for your transportation. It does not only help in transportation. Secondly, it helps in providing water. What water? Fresh water for domestic use. Domestic use means for the household use and also for your industrial uses. The water which is necessary for the factories. Thirdly, they are highly useful for generating your hydroelectricity power. Electricity generated using the water sources. And this electricity mostly found in the mountainous region. Next, it says they provide water for irrigation and which are useful for agriculture purpose. For doing agriculture, fresh water. And this fresh water is supplied by your lakes so that the farmer can use the fresh water to carry out their agriculture practices. Lastly, there are vast reserves of freshwater fish. That means it plays as a role of food.
food source to the people okay where large amount of fresh water fish are available or uh, used for fishing in the lakes important water bodies is rivers what is rivers a river is a body of water or stream of water which originate from the highland that flows downhill and drains into lakes or sea if you see here in the image given on the slide you'll find that the rivers you'll find mountain here from this mountain the river originates means starts okay it starts and start flowing from the plain areas and lands and finally it joins your lake or sea or even ocean such water bodies are known as your rivers before heading more into rivers let us learn some of the important terms used in rivers number one source of a rivers what does source of a river means a place from where a river originates is called its source means the place where the river starts here in the side image you find here the small streams the river is starting from the melting of snow where the snow melts converts into water and start flowing forming into different streams and later on forms a larger water body known as rivers the source might be of spring a lake or even a glaciers secondly mouth of a river what is a mouth of a river a mouth of a river here means the ending of river or the place where a river joins a sea or ocean is called a mouth of a river if you see here in the image given below here this portion you will find that the river was flowing through the plain rains and then finally joining into a bigger water body might be sea or ocean this ending part of the river is known as your mouth of a river What is perennial river then? A perennial rivers are those rivers where the water is available throughout the year or the river which contain water throughout the year. The water does not dry. For example, in this image you find that the uh, large number of water is present in the rivers. Basically, perennial river originates from the mountain, from glaciers, from the melting of snows and ice. Hence, they contain water throughout the year, the water doesn't dry. The second here, the perennial, sorry, the uh, non-perennial river. The second is your non-perennial river are those river where they don't contain water throughout the year. Example, this image here again, you find this is a dry river bed. Here in this river, water contains only during the rainy season once the rainy season is over the river dries up therefore they don't provide water throughout the year or they don't contain water throughout the year such river are known as your non perennial river now just like the importance of lakes rivers also has very important role or very important character to play on the surface of the earth it also provides fresh water for domestic and uh, industrial uses. It also provides water for irrigation. That means the water for, from the rivers is used for agriculture purposes. It also acts as a mode of transportation, providing your inland water transport. Means they use river to go from one place to another by the help of a boat. They are rich source of freshwater fish. Freshwater fish means the fish which are not found uh, from sea or ocean. Okay, hence they provide lots of food source. They also provide employment to the uh, people living near to the uh, rivers where they could earn through fishing. The deltas of the rivers, the delta are, is a uh, landform formed in the mouth of the rivers. Delta of the rivers supports agriculture because it deposits lots of sediments and these sediments are very fertile fertile means very good soil where agriculture thrive and also it supports wildlife we have finished 
studying and learning about different types of water bodies. But before starting going to the further, let us learn now the biggest challenge faced by those water bodies. Such one of the biggest challenges faced is your pollution or your water pollution. You must have heard the word pollution many a times. Now what is pollution? A pollution is the introduction of harmful substances into the environment might be in the form of gas which comes out from your car, the uh, um, smoke, carbon dioxide, by liquid, dirty water into the chemicals going into the water or your gas. This harmful effect, these harmful substances when add into the environment causes harmful effects to the living beings living on the earth. Now those are known as your pollution. Such one pollution is known as your water pollution. Now, the presence of undesirable substances in the water making it unfit for the use by humans as well as by animals is called water pollution. For example, you take a glass of water, clean water, in that water you drop some sand, you drop some leaves, you drop some leftover food, you mix some stones some pebbles and you mix it. Is it uh, fit for drinking? No. So same way when the undesirable substances in the form of plastics, in the form of sewages, in the form of fertilizers, when they mix with the water, they cause your water pollution. Now what are the causes of water pollution? Firstly, urbanization. Urbanization means what? When the population moves from the villages to town. And this urbanization is increasing in India in the recent decades, which resulted in the rise of waste disposal, both from the domestic, that is from the houses, as well as from the industrial sectors. If the number of population increases, therefore, number of waste will increase. This waste directly or indirectly gets mixed with the water and creates water pollution. Secondly, Agriculture waste. Now, for doing agriculture in the modern uh, times, lots of fertilizers and pesticides have been used so that they can get nice crops. Those fertilizers, those pesticides get drained when the rainy season comes with the overflow of the water from the agricultural fields. And those pesticides and fertilizers join the rivers and ultimately pollute the water and that is how the agriculture waste is responsible for causing your water pollution thirdly religious and social practices since india is a very religious country where lots of faiths lots of religions is carried out this is also another uh, um, factor which causes water they throw the um, images of god and goddesses into the water which contains paint and those paint contains um, chemicals in it, they can mix with it, they throw waters, they, they do cremations of bodies near, near the rivers and throw the remains into the uh, water bodies which is highly responsible for creating water pollution. Fourthly, oil spill. Now lots of oil, which oil? Fossil oil. For example, your petroleum are obtained from the seas and oceans. So in that process what happens is sometimes there is a leakage when they extract the oil from the oil fields there is a leakage and it spills all over the water bodies. Not only that also the water from drains and other sources which contain oil directly or indirectly gets mixed with the water, good water and creates water pollution. So these are the causes of your water pollution. So by this we end this chapter of water bodies. I will request the students to please read your book, your textbook as much as possible. I would also love to request the guardians and parents to encourage your children to read the book, their textbook before solving any of the questions. Thank you.